Hey guys, Jim here. Wanted to introduce you to a maker that you may not be familiar with yet, uh, with the newest acquisition I have into my collection here. Gentleman's name is Alistair Bastian, and he is a part-time knife maker out of Southern Australia, whom I discovered on Instagram, and I will put his Instagram information uh, which actually it's very simple. It's, it's Bastion Knives on Instagram. And I'll put his email address and his website and everything in the description. Uh, I came across him quite by accident. I think somebody had tagged me in one of his pictures or something. And I looked at his knives as being something refreshingly different. Different enough that I reached out to him immediately uh, and said that I just I just fell in love with what he was doing. Everything looked different, the materials, the sculpting, the, the shape of the overall knife. And I'm at the point now where it takes a lot to excite me. Now the fun thing is, when I come out here and do videos, you're seeing things that I've bought for myself or I've chosen to review uh, from others or a guest blade that's been offered and that I wanted to do a review on. There's, there's no real hate here on my channel. I've had a couple reviews that were, you know, the knife wasn't all that great, and I've been very honest about that. But I'm fortunate enough to come out here with stuff that I love, that I really, really enjoy, and this is certainly no exception. What you're looking at here is something that's quite a bit different from pretty much anything else I've ever owned. The detail work is incredible. This is a completely handcrafted knife. No CNC is involved, uh, no water jet, no wire EDM. Everything that you're about to see here is done by hand. And that's something I have a profound respect for. And there's nothing wrong with using a CNC or water jet or wire EDM, not at all. But when you see somebody that can do all the things that's being done here and do it by hand and create a particular level of fit, finish, and overall quality... I think that speaks volumes for the passion that they have. What you're looking at here is a three and three quarter inch blade in S35VN. Beautiful hand rub satin. Really, really clean job on that. With an overall length of about eight and a half inches. First thing that struck me was his unique blade profile. It's a very, very, very uh, useful blade and a very aggressive design. Very prominent swedge up at the top, which is really what you would want to consider a harpoon. It's a very, it's like a three-quarter harpoon. Again, the beautiful satin work, very deep belly, very prominent tip. This is something that is a purpose-built knife made for actual use. I mean, the, the kind of guy that may only own one knife, he doesn't care about it being a show knife, doesn't care how much it costs. He's going out every day with this in his pocket, and he's got to cut shit. And this is the kind of knife, that kind of blade profile that allows him to do that. The action is smooth and proper. This one really favors being push-buttoned. Uh, you can rock back on it, and it opens just fine. But... Oh, and listen to that. Let me get this a little bit closer to the microphone here. Maybe we can hear it a little bit better. There is a very solid thunk when it locks into place. Here's the lockup, by the way. So if I can get some light in there. There we go. Now, you're looking at the bolsters going, what in the hell is that? It looks like some kind of watercolor artwork more so than something that you would see on a knife. Well, this is the beauty of what uh, Ali does. He forges his own Damascus and Mokume. He follows a traditional Japanese Mokume style, which is exactly what you're seeing here on the bolsters. This is a mixture of copper and iron. And when I first saw it, and even when I received it, I, I had to, to message him and go, okay, I've never seen anything quite like this. What are the materials in there? And that's when he told me, he says, yep, it's, uh, it's copper and iron. And it's something that he's actually worked with quite extensively. He started building knives back in 1983, and 
he's honed his craft into making his own materials. You know, he started uh, making jewelry and lead lighting and wood sculptures, metal fabrication. And these are all things that you can find out by uh, reading his bio on his website. But he had restored a knife way back in the day, back in uh, 83, 84. And after losing it in 99, he decided he was going to create his own knife with just basic tools and a belt sander. To, to, you know, just to kind of replace that knife and have something else in his pocket. And then he realized just how much he enjoyed doing that, that he wanted to do that. I don't want to say as, as his primary career, obviously, he's a, he's a part-time maker, but something that he wanted to do uh, as, as a hobbyist knife maker. And what he's done here is he's created something that I really haven't seen anywhere else. The overall profile of this knife, the shape of it, Open or closed is something quite a bit different. But it's the little details like this. Take a look at the backspacer. All titanium, done in a bamboo style carving, and it's got a wonderful feel to it. And you can see that this was done by hand. And that theme is followed through into the multicolor anodized titanium clip. Great feel to that as well. Wonderfully sculpted, nice uh, upsweep there to make easy entrance into the pocket. Wonderfully shaped to match the shape of the frame. He's fashioned his own lock bar over travel. And then what I found particularly interesting was that he followed that motif into the jimping on the spine of the blade. And that follows through into his bolster and into the tie frame on the lock side. So you've got this wild bamboo look at almost every angle that you view the knife from. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty damn amazed at the level of workmanship as well as the ergos. This feels so nice in the hand. It's got the feel of a much larger knife because he's using uh, a larger handle, obviously, three and three quarter inch blade, but an overall length of uh, eight and a half inches. You've got a lot of handle there. Your finger, or sorry, your thumb drops right onto that recess that's right behind the harpoon and falls right on the bamboo style jimping. Everything about the knife looks good and feels good. And the action, by the way, very smooth. It's got a nice detent. I would prefer, honestly, a little bit of a stronger detent. That way I could really light switch it. It would be, you know, a really, really fast screaming flipper. But again, as long as you push button it, that's the effect you're going to get. Opens with such authority. Feels so damn good. I also like what he's done here. He's contoured the frame, and then he's flattened the carbon fiber here. Now, this is something, I've seen a lot of makers do it, uh, but it really reminds me a lot of what R.J. Martin does on the Q36 on the carbon fiber scales. So it's got the contouring, and then he kind of flattens it out. So you see an interesting play in the light on the carbon fiber. Almost brings out two different patterns. Everything is nicely contoured, rounded off, very gentle, very comfortable in the hand. No hot spots. No jumping from material to material. So when you go from the carbon fiber to the titanium, it feels nice. It feels smooth. The backspacer is only slightly raised. Only at the high points, those little joints in between the bamboo sections. And again, it feels just like the pocket clip. All the shaping that's done here, everything makes sense when you put this in the hand. And it was funny, I posted a couple of pictures uh, earlier this evening on Instagram, because today was the day I got this knife. 
And so one of the gentlemen that uh, posted on one of my pictures said, oh, my God, I actually I was holding that exact knife at a big Australian knife show. And I fell in love with it. And somebody else popped in there and went, oh, my God, I remember when you were holding that knife. You loved it so much. There's something about holding this knife in the hand that just feels so incredible. And it shows you the level of precision or at least the attention to the details that he's putting into his knives. Now, this particular knife doesn't have a name. He just calls it a flipper. I'm the kind of person, I like to name shit. I don't know why. And I, I started really thinking about it. And I looked at the overall shape. And I was thinking about the, uh, there's a, uh, a particular animal that's actually in Australia. So it kind of fits well since the maker is from Australia. It's called the, uh, the quoll. And it's like this little marsupial thing, this little nocturnal creature. And what it made me think of was this kind of thick, tall body and this really severe taper. This kind of like, like the body of the quoll going down to the head, then down to the, the, the kind of snout that it has. It's almost like a, almost kind of looks like a small squatty possum. And it reminded me of that snout. So, hey, maybe if he's looking for a name, Qual might just fit. I don't know. So, overall, I got to tell you guys, if you haven't had the pleasure of scrolling through his website, seeing what he does, particularly through his Instagram, because he's really good about putting several pictures of every build that he does, as well as a couple of videos of each knife on Instagram. Go take a look. See what he's doing. And I don't think that there's a material that he'd be scared to work with, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to do anything, at least the first knife you get from him, go with his Soul authored Mokume. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's unlike anything else I've ever seen. I really haven't seen anything quite like this. Now, my lighting is casting a lot of blue onto this. And there are little, little bits of blue in the iron there. But the copper color really jumps out. It has this... Again, it looks like watercolor artwork. And that's what I found particularly interesting about this. Uh, nice union between the bolster and the scale material. Uh, there is a detectable seam. You do see the, the joint in between the two. Uh, but it feels really good. Even where he's contoured it here, it's the same contour here as there is here. So it has a nice clean feel. You really don't have a big jump from this, the carbon fiber to the Mokume has a nice smooth as glass feel to it but yes you do see the uh, the joint in between let's take a look at it back here kind of has a he's done it at an angle there so that's even trickier where he's angled the cut on the carbon fiber and on the bolster material very clean work overall it is absolutely uh, easy to tell that this is a hand-built knife. You know, it's like picking up an Alan Elishowitz. You know, he's got incredible precision and, and he does uh, some really, really beautiful materials. But you can look at his knives and go from knife to knife and see that they are absolutely handmade. There'll be little, little things that'll jump out at you here and there that will tell you that. Give you a nice close-up look at the blade finish. Uh, he very clearly spent a lot of time doing the hand rub on that satin. Got my uh, fingerprints on there, my apologies. And it does have a really, really nice edge on this as well. So there you are, guys. Uh, an introduction for many of you who may not know who he is to uh, Alistair Bastian. Please go check him out and uh, just chat him up and, and see what kind of uh, interesting things you can come up with. Because not only is he making some creative original designs, but he will also work on a complete custom of your design. If you drew something out or had ideas of, oh, I like this kind of blade and this for a bolster and this for a handle and this kind of shape and this is the size of my hand, he will create a masterpiece based off of your ideas as well. Now, I'm sure that takes a little bit longer. There's a lot of back and forth during that process, but there are not a lot of guys out there right now that will work in that manner. They want to work within the models that they've created and, you know, customize it and do different things, but stay within their own models. He will create an all-new model just for you, so do keep that in mind. 
as of right now, uh, today is July 2nd of 2014, his books are open. I don't know how much longer that will be. Again, remember, he is a part-time maker. He has a full-time job in another industry. So it's, it's probably not going to be where you can, you know, see this video eight months from now and get your order in right away. But for right now, his books are open. And I would highly suggest trying something out. His prices are reasonable. You're not paying an arm and a leg, some kind of ridiculous, uh, stupid amount of money. But you're getting a handmade product. And if you decide to go for Damascus in the Blade and Mokume on your show side, you're getting into something that will not be replicated elsewhere. This is his own process, his own hands, and I think it came out absolutely beautiful. When you feel it in your hand, you're going to understand why I have such an appreciation for this. I knew I liked how it looked. I knew I was excited about getting it, but it was when I first wrapped my fingers around it that I went, oh shit, this is a wonderful surprise being even nicer than I anticipated. So there you go, guys. There's a quick look at that. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I love when you guys do. I love your comments. It's uh, at Jim Skelton TV. Super simple, easy to find. And I'm going to hop out of here for now and get to work on some other videos.